I on NPI, and uh, last week we kicked it off with the ESP32 S2 and all the things that we're going to do with CircuitPython, TinyUSB, where to get it on DigiKey, the specific part number. All Sign that, up, get them when they when all they that, All that good stuff. Um, but this week, we are doing a new I on MPI, because that's, that's what right. it's about, new. Every week is going to be totally different, so we're going to take a total left turn onto yeah. a different highway. This is Maxim. And we're going to look at some Maxim all-in-one buck converter modules, which I thought were really interesting. Yep. Um, so they're called the Himalaya Microslick step-down power modules. And um, what's interesting about this is it's a common power supply problem you got. You have, you know, a high voltage, four volts to maybe 36 volts. Maybe it's, you know, because you have a large battery or, uh, you know, your DC input is, is um, inconsistent. You don't know what they're going to plug in. You need to get like three volts or five volts or six volts or something out. And you need about a, an amp or so. You'd want to use a buck converter. Everyone, you know, people here, uh, you know, they want to use um, an LDO if you're really price sensitive. But the moment you have any heat concerns or power concerns, a buck converter is going to get you really good uh, performance. A lot better than LDO because you, you know, you have 96 or so, 92 to 96 percent efficiency. So. Um, one of the things you also notice really fast when you do buck converters is that you know you have um, chips and sometimes you need external MOSFET, you need an external inductor, and you need external components, capacitor. Before you know it, it actually gets kind of large. And as your board gets larger and all the components get separated, the efficiency can go down because you have these traces and the traces, you know, you lose, uh, there's some resistance to the traces. Also, um, you know, they're not as fully integrated. Um, what's interesting about these modules is they're like so tiny and they're all in one and they even have the inductor built into them. So all you really need um, is like two capacitors, input output capacitor, output capacitor. And if you have the adjustable version, maybe two resistors to set the adjustable resistance, uh, the voltage using adjustable resistance. So you want to look at some more pictures, maybe some part numbers? Yeah, maybe? so there's a couple things. Um, one, um, there's a schematic available. Yeah, so this is it. This is all you need. I mean, like, you have a couple caps, the input output caps, you, know, you have a couple filter caps, um, you have resistors to set the frequency and the stability capacitor, but they're all, these are all very small parts. Um, everything else is completely integrated. The MOSFET is integrated, the chip is integrated, um, and the inductor even is integrated. Yeah, and for ION and uh, MPI, we'll always give the place where you can get it, so it's available on DigiKey. This is their part number. Yeah. And there's a, a few different... Um, there's a few versions. Yeah. There's one that has a fixed 3.3 volt output, a fixed 5 volt output, and there's also one with adjustable output. So if you want to save two components, it's basically the same price, you know, pick the 3 or 5 volt one, you don't have to worry about those external parts. And then I want to make sure I show these on the overhead as well, because there's, yeah. there's I actually got the eval board uh, to show. So this is the eval board, and this shows um, the full setup. So what's interesting about this is that this part here, you see that looks like an inductor because these are clearly the capacitors this is the input and output capacitor and then a couple passives but this over here i got some chips this is the actual module itself so it's like so small i'm gonna zoom in here i see you how far zoom out? You well you know we got this new overhead okay. and i've never zoomed You're in zooming. all the way people are going to lift my fingerprints oh sure whatever okay so this is tiny this is only a few whoa 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 so close whoa so close. this is it we are in the chip <laughs> it's too small okay. um so it's, you know, the chip is wire bonded in, there's got the FET is built into it, so it's uh, fully synchronous. And then you see the, the inductor is bonded on top. Um, so one of the things that they showed off with this is that it's also extremely uh, high efficiency because everything is so integrated. So it's a little bit more expensive than getting all the separate parts, but nothing's going to beat this on size and efficiency. If you, you know, if you, if you have a wearable or you have a small, device like a camera or sensors and you need it to be as efficient and as small as possible um, this would be a very nice buck converter to use okay and uh, as we explored the maxim site uh, we saw a video and we're going to play their video that they had it's about a minute long from one of their events today i'm talking about the himalaya power we have our switching regulators here 60 volts max input voltage with integrated fets and today we're comparing against competition. So we have a fully synchronous device against a competitor who is asynchronous, converting 24 volts to 5 volts. And how do you compare them? Usually with efficiency. 
Today we can share that efficiency in terms of an actual visual representation with the thermal camera. So with the thermal cameras, you can actually see the difference in color on the screen. So on the left, you can see that we are much cooler. The blue representation and a max temperature of 55 degrees actually shows that we are cooler than competition, where you can see the red and white actually pro uh, projecting about 95 degrees in terms of temperature. So the asynchronous solution is going to be less efficient. It has an external diode. We are fully synchronous, so we have internal FETs, which is definitely going to be more efficient and have less resistance. On the right side, we also have a two-amp solution where competition does have an actual synchronous solution, much like ours. However, even using an exact inductor and same switching frequency, we are still more efficient, and that represents an even cooler solution for maximum versus competition of about three to four degrees. So in both cases, it's important to actually be more efficient. Whenever you have more heat, you need more external components. Maybe you need airflow, maybe you need an external heat sink. So the cooler operation is actually a simpler solution for you in time and external components. And that's week. That's this week's Ion MPI. Yes. Check it out. These are so cool. I think you know, for making a very small device, it needs to have flexible power input, um, and I just need to be as small and as efficient as possible. Especially if you got small battery and you want to make sure that you use that battery well. Check this out. The the whole series. They have a bunch of different chips with different uh, voltage inputs, outputs, etc. But uh, this is the one I think you can start with because it's the adjustable one. That's Ion NPI.